Hey guys, Leon Sylvester here and today we're going to be looking at a very interesting topic. We're going to be finding out the answer to the question, does creatine cause hair loss? This is a really interesting topic and something that I'm very interested in myself because I love training in the gym. And it, obviously if you're watching this video, you're interested in whether or not it can cause hair loss. So make sure you stay tuned to the end because we will have an answer to that question. Um, we got some kind of bad news because it you know, well, anyway, what we're going to find out about in this video is we're going to look at what creatine actually is. Then we're going to look at how creatine can cause hair loss. We're going to look at a few of the scientific studies on creatine and hair loss. And then we're going to look at dihydrotestosterone and how creatine can increase levels of dihydrotestosterone, which Im ultimately impacts the hair follicles. Uh, then we're going to look at a little bit into the potential for the reduction in antioxidants and the drying of the skin, which ultimately lead to hair loss. So what's probably happening is you may have been training in the gym for some time. You, you know, you're looking for ways to basically improve performance. So you may have had a conversation with somebody that you met in the gym and asked them about supplements. So they might have told you, you know, they're taking whey protein, taking amino acids, a pre-workout, multivitamins. And then at some point, the conversation of creatine will come up. And it's a natural thing it's not like taking something like anabolic steroids creatine is okay right so so you used to say okay i'm gonna take it but if you're watching this video you're either taking it already or you're thinking about taking it but does it make you bold that's the question that you're trying to get answered so there is like a ton of anecdotal evidence out there so you can just go on like reddit bodybuilding.com or any other big forums out there that are into like weight training and you'll see a lot of people that are commenting it saying that They've been taking creatine for six months and they're 24 and all of a sudden they're losing their hair. And there's a lot of anecdotal evidence out there. But we can't just rely on anecdotal evidence. Uh, we're actually going to look into the scientific research and we're going to try and come up with a, with a more coherent conclusion of whether or not it does cause hair loss. Uh, but there actually is some evidence to suggest that creatine can accelerate hair loss. Now creatine... It's a naturally occurring chemical and it's found in the body, typically in the brain and the muscles. And it's commonly taken basically by athletes or bodybuilders or people that are just trying to improve performance in the gym, maybe look a bit more aesthetically pleasing. And they take it because there's a belief that creatine can provide extra energy and uptake more water. So that will actually help promote muscle growth and provide energy to the body. So that will ultimately improve performance. It's very, very commonly used. Uh, you can go into any kind of major like online online store for supplements or you can go into Holland and Barrett, you can go into the gym and you're very likely to come across it in all over the place. Now, creatine itself is a nitrogenous organic acid and it helps supply the organisms with energy, but it particularly is effective in the muscle cells. It promotes energy production through the formation of ADP, uh, which is the substance utilized by cells to perform everyday functions. Now it's, it is widely used and well, there remains further scientific investigation into its use. It is pretty widely researched already, but there's a lot of gaps in the, in the, in the research that just need to be filled. So the, there's more research that needs to be done. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at how creatine can actually accelerate hair loss, because this is pretty interesting. So there is research done, like I just said, there's research done into the understanding of the effect of its use and how it can impact athletes and bodybuilders and, and average Joes that are trying to improve performance or aesthetics. But the understanding of the mechan mechan mechanism suggests potential for the promotion of hair thinning. So what we're trying to say is that it doesn't necessarily cause the, it's not necessarily the direct cause of hair loss. However, uh, the use of creatine may accelerate balding in individuals who may already be prone to alopecia or male pattern baldness. Now, the reason for this is because one of the most commonly identified underlying causes of the thinning of hair is the action of dihydrotestosterone or DHT, and that's a derivative of testosterone. Now, the Clinic a Journal of Sports Medicine published findings that suggests that short term, creatine use increases the rate of conversion from testosterone to dihydrotestosterone. So that's kind of getting alarm bells ringing. If DHT is one of the underlying causes of the thinning of hair and creatine is raising the levels of DHT, then we've got, an, that's an alarm. That's something that, you know, I, I'm getting a little bit like, whoa, okay. So what this study found out is that after seven days of creatine loading, 
or so what people usually do when they take creatine is they'll take a high dose for the first seven days so it might be like 10 to 20 grams a day and then they'll do a maintenance dose so what this study is saying is after seven days of creatine loading or a further 14 days of creatine maintenance dose serum t levels did not change however right however levels of dht which is the underlying cause of hair thinning increased by 56 percent 56 percent after seven days and remained 40 percent above baseline after 14 days maintenance so that's that's a considerable amount that's not like three or four percent this is these are high numbers now the ratio of dht to t which is dihydrotestosterone to testosterone also increased by 36% after seven days creatine supplementation and remained elevated by 22% after the maintenance dose. So that's, there's some pretty, uh, pretty in interesting statistics. So why does that matter? So DHT is a very highly potent androgen and it's hypothesized to impact the sensitivity of hair follicles in the androgen phase of growth. Now, the androgen phase of growth comes very early in the hair growth cycle, and that will commonly lead to the hair falling out, uh, and it basically will be unable to grow back without treatment. So, review of the available research has led numerous professionals to conclude that the use of creatine is most likely to have a significant impact on individuals who are genetically predisposed to hair loss, alopecia, and pattern baldness. Right? Now also, in addition to the increase in dihydrotestosterone, um, there was a study conducted by the Journal of the International Society of Sports Nutrition, a bit of a mouthful, and they concluded that creatine use is actually likely to reduce the level of antioxidants within the body. Now that can have a whole variety of negative health impacts. However, what's important for us, because we're trying to find out whether or not it causes hair loss, is that this low level of antioxidants can actually lead to damaging stress on cells and DNA and healthy hair growth requires effective cell activity, right? So that, therefore, uh, that can lead to the reduced capacity for hair to grow strong and healthy because creatine is lower in the level of antioxidants. So that is something else that, you know, combine that with the D levels in DHT and the reduction in antioxidants is alarm bells are ringing. Now, not only are we talking about DHT and antioxidants, but also creatine has the potential to dry out skin. Because I mentioned before that uh, people take creatine because it can help the muscles uptake more water, it can have the potential to draw water from other areas of the body. So that can lead to dehydration and dry skin, but this is particularly important because if that water is drawn from the scalp and the scalp becomes dry, that can lead to unhealthy hair follicles as well as the thinning of hair. Now, dry skin can also become easily inflamed and cause brittle hair. And basically, the scalp supports the hair follicle, right? Obviously. And that provides the necessary nutrients for hair growth. But if we're getting dry skin, if we're getting an unhealthy scalp, that can lead the, to the potential of hair thinning. Now, it can be overcome by proper hydration, but at the end of the day, it's, it's one of those. It's, do you want to risk it? Do you want to, do you want to risk having enough water to stop your hair falling out like i don't know it doesn't make sense to me now in conclusion limited use is considered safe we've done with the help of a medical professional uh, but like i said about that anecdotal evidence before we've got like an example here of julian and he personally doesn't recommend create create creating sorry doesn't recommend taking creatine he noticed significant hair fall in just 12 days after taking five that should say grams a day uh, and he doesn't even have any family history of baldness. Some may not react like others, but for those of you who have a family history of baldness, I'd say that this may speed up the process. So the conclusion is, is the use of creatine does have the potential for negative side effects, including the loss of hair. So it's up to you. Like for me personally, the benefits of creatine do not outweigh the negatives. The negatives are too strong. I do not want to get bald just for a few extra reps in the gym or something that may improve performance by five percent it's just not worth it uh, i'd much rather stick to a healthy diet good training and kind of get rid of the creatine uh, and just live that way so guys i hope you enjoyed this video please make sure to hit subscribe to the channel we've got a lot more content coming out your way and i hope you guys have a great day